these questions and one exercise, which is based on the exercises that you have done in the class. So um, it will be very easy. So uh, and for everything, you can have um, you can use notes or written. I mean, your notes or or printed notes. You can use uh, anything that you like um, uh, in the exam, except um, laptop. I mean, except phones or things that can connect you. <laughs> things that can uh, connect you with the with the other people. So no phones, no tablets, no computers, and. Uh, so if you don't have notes, you can print some, or, or you can just make a summary of the. And if you need some formula that uh, it is not, uh, you can ask during the exam as well. So, um, um, and Lee, I know that's everything that we have to say about the exam. Uh, okay. Uh, so. Um, so yesterday uh, we introduced this. Let me recall the main point. And, and now that we have this um, this formula, that the, the we have the second law, no, that tells us that uh, that if I have the entropy of a system, in this case we are interested in bipartite systems, each one which with its own environment, but. Uh, uh, if if we compute this per unit of time, uh, and 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 we sum uh, the entropy of the environment, then this is the total entropy production, or the total change in entropy. Sometimes I use total or prod because it is a production of entropy. It's something that uh, you know the entropy increases in the in the universe, and the, and this is a uh, 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 and how the entropy of the, uni the universe changes. And this is bigger than zero. Uh, this is the second law, which we have uh, somehow, yeah, maybe you can say, well, you are using the second law, and sometimes you say that you have to prove the second law because the Maxwell demon put, it, put the question, putting into question the second law and so on. What it is true is that once you consider systems with environments, so you, you, uh, here I have an environment uh, X and an environment Y. Uh, in, in fact, you are already assuming some type of degradation of the information because you don't have access to the microstate of the environment. So uh, you are mm, uh, uh, you are in a, in, a, in a scenario where the second law is safe. And, and actually, the master equation, as I sh as I've showed yesterday and on. It is um, the master equation is compatible with the second law, or, or if you like, you can prove the, ma the second law from the master equation. So, uh, but this is it's not a proof of the second law because from fundamental uh, uh, mechanics, because in fact, when when you introduce environments, master equations, Langevin equation, all these things, you are already including irreversibility there uh, because you are neglecting. You are replacing all the microscopic dynamics of the environments by some noise and some. some uh, um. So we are now not interested so much on foundations of the second law and things like that, but just on applying what we have learned about the Maxwell demon and so on, trying to apply this to this uh, scenario, which is relevant for nano machines, biological machines, and so on. So, uh, and the key idea here was to uh, decompose this. Uh, we know that we can use information theory to decompose this into uh, uh, the entropy of each uh, the entropy of each system minus the mutual information, which is a measure of correlation. 
And actually, this formula is what uh, Leah used on Monday to, I mean, she did, didn't use this formula explicitly, but from this formula, but by, if you integrate this formula, for instance, measurement. In a measurement, the, the system, let's say that this is the system and this is the demo. In the measurement, this doesn't change, so this is zero when you integrate it. This is the change of entropy in the, in the demo, in the observer. This is, uh, when you integrate this, you get the mutual information at the end minus the mutual information at the beginning. At the beginning is zero because measurement starts with uncorrelated states. So, uh, so you have a kind of second law for the measurement, which is exactly what, uh, what Leah derived on Monday using free energy. But uh, free energy, remember that it is uh, energy minus Ts. So you can go from free energy to, from entropy to free energy just by multiplying by T and so on. So, uh, so this equation contains everything that we have learned for one week and a half. Let's say this is the, the main equation. Um, and as I said, uh, you can apply this to even to continuous time processes. Sealer uh, engine is continuous time, but you have the measurement. So, so it is just an event that probably lasts some time, but uh, you can integrate. Uh, and uh, so you can integrate this in the different stages of the, of the Sealer engine. Um, but you can apply also to continuous time. And the idea is, so, uh, the idea, uh, is that when I dot is positive, you are measuring and for that, uh, forget about this for the moment, suppose that this is constant. If this is positive, you need that the entropy, you need to, to dissipate to in increase the entropy of the environment, you have to dissipate energy or heat or something like that. And uh, so measuring costs you something. And when I is negative, uh, you have feedback. Now, when I is negative, this term is positive, so, so you can reduce the entropy of the environment which is the idea of a motor of a, of a, I mean, whenever you have a motor or you have a, the motor takes energy from this, from one bath or a air conditioning or heat pumps, that heat pumps also reduce the entropy of the environment. So here uh, you can, here you have that the entropy of the environment must be bigger than zero. And here you can have, you can have that this, this, this is a possibility, of course, not always. So, uh, uh, so you have here your machine uh, is is taking resources to measure and to measure or to this is bigger or equal. So it could be, of course, I'm I'm neglecting this now. Eh? This is the case of S X S I zero. Let's say uh, not not. Uh, I'm putting uh, this per unit of time, but you can you can have this uh, scheme of this uh, this idea also integrating this and in in some period of time. And this will be instead of i dot, it will be delta i. But uh, this is the idea. So whenever you you find that the correlations are increasing, you are measuring, and whenever you see that the correlations are decreasing, you are making feedback, and that's. This could be the whole story of the Sealer engine in, in, in just one line. So. Uh, in analogy with uh, the, the lecture of Lea, the? So the lecture of we had with Lea, uh, in the second line, the feedback, we should put a Y prime for. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here, uh, uh, Leah had to use notations for X before, after, and so on, and she used also M. But now we, I'm going to uh, um, analyze two systems where it's not even clear a priori who is the observer, who is the demo, and uh, who is the system, who is the demo. So I use X and Y. And... Um, 
And yeah, yeah uh, here when, when you have S dot, uh, these dots mean derivative with respect to time. So this means that why the entropy depends or why this depends on time because X and T, so this is uh, uh, X and Y are pro stochastic processes. So now you have these stochastic processes and this is, uh, I, I didn't include the time. But uh, they are, of course, if they are, if they are random variables, this is zero. Eh? I dot means the time derivative of this. So now I have uh, two random processes. This is super general. Eh? You can have these two random processes. Uh, they can be uh, continuous, so you have a Langevin equation, so a stochastic differential equation. No, they can even be, um, well, no, for that you need physics, so they must be physical systems. But uh, uh, you can have um, master equations, you can have whatever you like. Yeah. Uh, but they depend on time. So they depend on time, so everything, the entropy depends on time. Uh, here you have, this is just uh, uh, the sum over x and y of p, x, y, I think I wrote this yesterday, t log of p, x, y, p, x, p, y. And I write p, and you can have rho, which is the density, and so on. Uh, okay. And Leah uh, used not this because this is continuous time. Well, the series is continuous time, but you can integrate, let's say, between the time before and the time after. And then he used uh, Y prime or M prime or whatever to uh, denote the variables after and the variables before and so on. But this is even more general, so uh, actually we could have started the whole course like that, we say that, and apply, but uh, it is the historically and logical, I mean, the question, all this comes from the question of, uh, of uh, uh, historically posed by Maxwell and so on, so uh, yeah, okay. Now what happens in the state, so now I have a bipartite system. Bipartite uh, means here uh, just that a system is composed by two subsystems, but, they, but, but now in a moment we will have to restrict this definition and I will, ha I will give you a definition of bipartite system. Uh, what is the problem? If I have two systems, uh, I, if there is no, if the system is autonomous, so there is no driving or no external agent, well, no driving. And, and now we are going to, assume, well, for the moment we can assume that X and Y are continuous, discrete, whatever. Um, uh, in autonomous systems, the system reaches a steady state and in the steady state, uh, of course, by definition, a steady state means that this does not depend on time. So this derivative is zero. So in the steady state, I dot is zero, but also the entropies are zero. Well, actually this is zero. So uh, uh, the entropy of x is zero, the entropy of y is zero, and, and the only uh, remaining term in this um, is this one. And this is the second law for a steady state. You can imagine any transport uh, phenomena, like you have two thermal baths and something in between, and, the, and there is a... Uh, conduction of a flow of heat. This is a steady state, non-equilibrium steady state, and it's product producing entropy all the time. And what is the entropy? It's just uh, when you have, when you have two systems, 
T cold, T hot. And here you can have whatever you like, a motor, whatever you like here. And, um, uh, but in the steady state, so here you have a system. And in the steady state, the, the environment entropy is, if, if you have here, uh, let's say, Q cold, Q hot, So you have two bats, no? The system. And there is a Q hot, a Q hole, Q cold. And this is the entropy of the environment per unit of time. So it's a, it's a, it's a flow of heat. Uh, this guy is, uh, this is usually, this is negative, but let's, let's uh, keep the, convention of time. So you have um, minus Q hot. This is the Q cold divided by T cold. This is the change of entropy here and here is the change of entropy here. And usually this is positive. So the, the hot reservoir, uh, the entropy of the hot reservoir decreases and the entropy of the cold bath increases. Uh, in, in the steady state, uh, Q cold is equal to minus, uh, let's, uh, Q hot, Q cold is minus Q hot. So here you have that this is Q hot and um, this is minus, so this is plus, so it's 1 minus T cold divided by 1 minus T hot. So, Sorry, the, the, in, the, in this example, the, the change of entropy in the, is Q hot, 1 minus T cold, 1 minus T hot. And this is, big, this is bigger than this, so this is always positive. So this is the typical, I mean, this is the simplest case of a steady state where the second law just tells you that the that heat flows from cold to hot. Uh, sorry, there is something which is a bit unclear for the steady state. Do we have the Q's hot and cold which are equal or just the derivatives which are equal? Mm, the, well, we co the derivative is just per unit of time. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So the, if we have the derivative, we don't necessarily have both. Huh? If we have the derivatives equal, we don't necessarily have both equal. Yeah, they are equal. The derivative. So I don't Q, understand. The Qs are equal or not? Q hot equals minus Q in cold. A, in a, Q, Q is al always in a period of time. So yeah, it's the integral of Q dot. Which is equal to the integral of which is, of they are equal, they are equal. Okay. Uh, maybe in the transient. In the transient, maybe you can have. Uh, yeah, of course. If they are not equal, no, in the transient. Uh, the energy of the system, because this is the first law. I mean, the, the, the Q, the first law tells you that um, delta E in the system is Q hot plus Q cold. So if the system in the transient changes its energy, it's because there is a, an, this not, it's not balanced. So yeah, you are right that the Qs can be different from zero. Yeah. Because everything is constant. The steady state, by definition, by definition in the steady state, this is independent. Let's put it like that. This is independent. There is a st steady state. This is a, is this, the, this, if this is a master equation, we will see in the, well, we saw it yesterday in the master, that the master equation has a, st a stationary solution. And this stationary solution is, this is constant. For instance, remember the example that we uh, did uh, last week? I think it was like that. These transitions were mediated by, were by a bath at T1, and this at T2. 
And I think there was an energy, the energy here was zero, here was epsilon, here was zero, and here was epsilon. So you have a master equation for that. Uh, this could be, this is not a bipartite system, but it is, well, you could even think of this as x and this as y, and you have two uh, bits, let's say, two, two uh, yeah, you can have, uh, you can write this as, uh, yeah, at, uh, well, x and, and y. So we, we saw that in the steady state, there was a current, do you remember this example, no, that um, if T2, if T2 is smaller than T1, we, we, we saw the, the, the limit infinity and zero. In infinity, essentially the particle is here, and, and when it reaches two, it, it goes down and it can never go up. So it goes like that and, and uh, it's making this type of motion and then down, this type of motion and then up, this type of, so you have this current. This is a case of a steady state. Is you have a current, so this, this current, for instance, whenever the system is jumping like that, is exchanging energy with the bath one, because whenever it goes like that, it takes this, it goes from zero energy to epsilon, so this energy comes from the bath. So uh, whenever you have this, this step, you have epsilon. Whenever you have this step, you dissipate epsilon to the cold bath, and so on and so on. So you are taking energy in each step. Well, in each cycle, you are taking two epsilon from the hot and, and dissipating two epsilon to the cold. So this is another example of this type of thing. Here you have the same. Actually, because the, the cold is, is, is zero, the entropy production is infinity. But this is normal. When you have zero, when you have um, baths at zero, temp at zero temperature, then you have infinity production of, of, ent of entropy. And Q cold and Q hot are simply epsilon and zero. Uh, well, a Q, a Q hot, I think, is a F, two epsilon because, no, uh, I would say it's epsilon J, or may, no, maybe it's two epsilon J because you have to multiply. And Q uh, cold is, uh, and this is a correct unit. This is energy and this is, it, this is probability per unit of time. So this is time to minus one. So this is, this is joules divided by second. The two comes because uh, I think you have to sum. Yeah, remember that Q is a sum over I, I is more than J of uh, J I J, and then the heat in this case is uh, is the the energy of J minus the energy of I. No, uh, the opposite. And if you apply this formula to the four links, well, this is this is the total heat. When, when you want the heat, the Q, Q cold, Q hot, will be Ij, but mediated by the hot. We didn't study this because we, we studied in general only, only heat. But if you have, a, this is kind of a natural, no? to, if, if you have two baths, one is affecting this transition and one is affecting this transition, you have to sum, to, 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 to obtain Q hot, you only have to look at the transitions mediated by the bath, hot bath, which are one, two, three, four. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the, this is the, the, the heats here and the, and, and what is the, what is the S environment? It's, it's going to be this one. 2 epsilon j, 1 divided by t1, minus 1 divided by t2, OK? Uh, OK, so uh, these are examples of um, uh, 
Actually, for, uh, we are going to study now the information flows. And this example, we, we didn't put any exercise because it was complicated, the calculations. But maybe this example is, is easy to calculate the information flows. I will, I will check it. This afternoon, I will check it. Yeah. No, I say uh, no. I put this just. I, I uh, this is an assumption. This is just an assumption. Uh, not a. Uh, no, not. No, it's not necessary to be like that. But why? Why I put it? Because uh, actually, this is not. Uh, uh, I I I I wrote this just to to clarify the meaning of measuring and and feedback. And in the case that Leah uh, started, discussed on Monday, this is the case. For instance, in the measurement, this is the case because X is not affected. In the feedback, this is zero because it's not affected. In the feedback, this is not zero, but the integral is zero because it's a cycle. And finally, in the measurement, in the measurement, this is zero because X is not affected. And, and this is, the integral of this is zero if it is a memory, is symmetric memory. Because in asymmetric memory, the entropy doesn't change. But it is an assumption. It's just a special case to, I mean, because this is, a, this is how each system changes. But the, the important thing here is the, is the correlation, and how the correlations affect the entropy production, the entropy in the environment. Well, in the steady state, yeah. In the steady but state, it's always. Outside the steady state, you cannot say nothing in the in the transit. Okay, so but uh, uh, this is just the introduction to say that for an autonomous system with no driving, you reach a steady, steady state. Usually, you are interested in the steady state because the transients are complicated, depend on the initial condition, and I mean, you want a, when you want a motor in the cell, you want the motor to work in the steady state, essentially. Uh, so. Um, so this equation is useless. Well, this equation is useless. This equation is just reduced to that, which is not very OK. It's OK. This equation tells us that heat goes from hot to cold, good. <laughs> or that uh, currents of particles go to high chemical potential to low chemical potential. But this is something that you know uh, from undergraduate courses on thermodynamics. So this is not a, this is not a big deal. So we want to we want to um, keep we want to have something similar to this nice equation, but for a, for a steady state, and then for that we introduce the information flows. Yeah. Um, yes. So when we said uh, Q dot is greater than zero, can you explain why, what this means? Like I guess that Q is greater than zero, but like now we're adding more heat every time. Where is Q? I, I, uh, it was in the, uh, because I erased the Qs. OK. Yeah. No, but the Q, so uh, when you have two systems at two temperatures, maybe this is basic thermodynamics. But when you have two, and you have a flow, uh, you have, let's say, a system here, and you have Q, Q1, Q2 per unit of time, or when I put the Per unit of time, you can think also on a cycle, like Carnot cycle or something like that. Um, if, if the system doesn't change, Q1 is, is, is minus Q2. And the entropy production is minus Q1, T1, minus Q2, T2. So if I use this equation, uh, I can, uh, for instance, uh, use here... Um, uh, I don't know, uh, minus Q1, T1, plus Q1, T1, T2. And I obtain Q1 that multiplies 1, T2, 1 minus T1. So this means that if this is the cold, this is positive, and this must be, and this is, and the second law tells you that this must be positive. So if T2 is the cold, the, this is positive, and this is negative, and so on. This is the, what, uh, 
So what is your question? Let me know. Uh, okay, you get it that heat goes from the hot. But the, this is a consequence of the second law, eh? Not, not, I, I mean, heat flows from hot to cold because of the second law. Eh? Because of the second law, because, the, because it's the only way in which the entropy of the universe increases. Eh? Because this is the entropy. And this must have the same sign as this. And this, uh, okay. Uh, so, we want to, uh, to ask, to, to, to keep, I mean, to extend this to a steady states, but to keep these terms, uh, or, or at least information about these terms, about the mutual information, the entropy, and so on. So, we introduce the mutual, inf the, the, sorry, the information flow. Well, I did the, all this yesterday, but uh, I repeated the class of yesterday, I think. So, uh, um, and the information flows are the following, are um, defined as um, the derivative with respect to T e prime of X of the... You have other definitions in, in, in the literature, but um, this, I think, is the most elegant. Not the most practical, but the most elegant. I wrote this yesterday, so... Uh, okay. This is, the, this is the definition. This is, this is hard to calculate, eh? This is hard to calculate. Because for that, you need... Uh, for to, I mean, if you want to play with that, it's it's a pain because you need to you, you need the probability, the joint probability of x t prime y t, and the the best way of calculating this is to calculate the probability in two times, uh, for instance, x y prime at t prime and x prime y at t. And then this is the joint probability of finding x system x at x prime and system y at y at t, at t and this at t prime. And then you, you, get, you have the marginal, dx dy. And this, is, this gives you the marginal. This gives you the probability distribution of x t prime y t. But this is a mess. Eh, so we uh, we are not going. Uh, 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 this is a, uh, and from that you can get this inform this mutual information, which is the mutual information of x in a given time t prime, different from y. So bah, this is a, it is a mess. Unfortunately, these two things are easy to define in something called bipartite discrete systems. So what is a bipartite? system. There are also different definitions, but I, I'm going to use the, the simplest one, which is uh, that gamma the, the transition rate, so the, the, the probability to, to jump from x y to x prime y prime uh, per unit of time. This is zero. if uh, x is different from x prime and y is different from y prime. This has a very simple uh, if, uh, uh, interpretation. If this is y and this is x, and these are my states, uh, so... This means that in a jump, I cannot change x and y simultaneously. So there are no diagonal 
jumps. That's it. So I can only jump from x to, from, I can only change y or I can only change x in the, in the vertical and the horizontal. So uh, no transitions where x and x, x and y change. Both, let's say, where both x and y change are forbidden. Forbidden? Forbidden. So this is the definition of a bipartite system for discrete system. For continuous systems, it's a bit more complicated. For continuous systems, if you have two Langevin equations, bipartite means that the noise is uncorrelated, the noise in each equation. And you can even have, you can even have mixed systems. In the references, in the basic references, there is a there is a paper which is a kind of pedagogical paper on information flows. And we apply this to a device which is a, a, a nanotube which vibrates, so it's continuous. So there is a Langevin equation for, the, for X. And Y is the occupation of a quantum dot. So it's discrete. It can be only zero and one. So you can have that um, X is continuous and y is discrete, and this definition must be modified. This definition is only for x and y discrete. Which is much simpler. Well, when this happens, uh, this, the information flows are, are rather easy to calculate. Well, when this happens, you can, you can, um, you can write the, 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 this as follows. You can write the probability to jump from x pr to x prime for a given y. So the, the only non-zero transition rates are the vertical and horizontal. So the horizontals, for instance, are given by that. So this is, by definition, uh, the probability to jump from a state x, y to x prime y. So you only change x and y keeps is constant, we will use this notation and a similar notation for uh, jumps in y. And now if we, uh, if we uh, write the, the Langevin equation, the, sorry, the master equation, Remember the master equation was something like that. P, X, Y, the derivative is the incoming flow. So I can come from everywhere to my site X, Y. And the outgoing flow, which is from my state X, Y, I can go to any state. So now this is general for any system, for any uh, system composed by two. If the system is bipartite, I can, uh, instead of doing this, I can compute the jumps, well, it's just to decompose this, I, I have only, these are the non-zero transition rates. The non-zero gammas. So I can take now here, uh, I have to read this. I can write my master equation like um, mm, uh, x a sum over x prime. I can only compute. So here I can go come from anywhere, but 
now the system is bipartite. So uh, I can reach x uh, by changing x prime. So and so by by horizontal jumps, let's say. So I can go from x prime to x. Uh, and I can also leave uh, my system this is the contribution this is the contribution of jumps where y is constant and this is the contribution of jumps where x is constant so I prime And now, uh, remember that we use the currents. I will keep this because this is what I want to reach at the end of the calculation. So I have um, and you can see you can see that the master equation is split in two parts. One is due to jumps in x and the other is due to jumps in y. So this is going to be relevant here because remember the information flow x is the change in the, in the mutual information due to the evolution of x. So we see that this guy is going to be, uh, I mean, we, we, are, we can express this in terms of the jumps in x. And this guy is we keep x constant and we mo we move y. So this y i y the mutual in the information flow y is going to be given in terms of this. So uh, what? So if we uh, if we call this, we are going to call this. Well, let me write the, the definition. The current for a given y from x to x prime. This is the horizontal current, let's say. So here you have diagonal transition. So you only have currents here in the horizontal. The horizontal currents will be jy. And the vertical currents will be, the vertical is keeping x constant and moving y. And uh, they are defined like that. This is uh, gamma from x to x prime, dx minus the gamma minus the jumps from. It's everything, I, I think it's, the notation is a bit cumbersome, but I, the, the idea is very simple. It's to, to uh, uh, split everything in the master equation on, uh, in two terms, jumps on x and jumps on y. Sorry, just to be sure, what you define as a bipartite system now is a, a system where we only have horizontal and vertical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a condition. Eh? Not every system is bipartite. In this, in this sense, eh? this is a definition uh, of bipartite systems. Which I don't know, this was introduced in the, in the paper by Jordan Horowitz and Massimiliano Esposito. I don't know if it is general, maybe in, in other paper, I don't know, maybe you, Matteo, you know that. Bipartite essentially means that the system the, that the system is composed by two systems. This is an ex, extra condition. They call bipartite system the systems that obey this condition. I mean, the condition of uh, that there is no diagonal term. But I'm not so sure if, in, if it is a completely a general uh, uh, expression, I mean. So, uh, 
but but they they use it, so I I trust them. So. Uh, in, in the case, case. Oh, in, mass, in measuring and the system state. Well, and, uh, but this condition is a condition on the dynamics of a system. So you can even imagine uh, that the Maxwell demon, in, in general, uh, is uh, what Leah did on, on, on Monday. Usually, in the measurement, only the system, this is why we use this type of thing. Uh, the, one of the systems, the system remains constant and only the demon changes. And in the feedback is the other way around. So this is inspired by that. Uh, and the same, we, we define the same for X. So the, the master equation can be written in this in this way, pi, sorry, pi, pxy is the sum uh, of currents from x prime to x plus a sum of vertical currents so it's again the incoming flow but now we can distinguish between the two and and you see now it's very clear this accounts for the for for the change in the probability due to the system x and this is due to the system Y. Okay. So one can prove, for instance, I'm not going to use this. This is not in the paper, but you can you can prove. It's not easy, eh? But uh, you can prove that P X T prime Y T. So this is uh, this is the. Um, this is the derivative. This is the, the derivative with respect to time of the whole thing. Remember that this is the, we can write this as p x t y t x y. This is the probability distribution of these two random variables, and this is the probability distribution of two different random variables. But now we make the derivative and make this equal to zero. This is equal to this part because this is. This is essentially how the probability changes, but only considering that x changes. So only considering those those jumps. Okay, I, I, you can prove this as an exercise, which is not an easy exercise. But in a bipartite system, you can split the evolution of the whole thing by an evolution on x and an evolution on y, and that's the, the whole story. Yeah. only have one of the subsystems at the time changing, right? Yeah. Having a transition. And I wanted to know whether is this generally used as an approximation saying, okay, if time is very small, then we have... No, 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 no. This is more precise. This is, um, um, this is more precise. This is, uh, uh, when you define transition rates in a master equation, the definition of transition rate means, uh, the definition is this one, it's um, uh, that the, the, uh, the definition is that uh, the transition rates must, so you have this, the probability, uh, 
let me now use, uh, well, x only, because it is, uh, the definition is, the f well, let's use x and y. The definition is x, y at time t plus delta t. Condition, or x prime, y prime, condition to x, y, t. Uh, this is uh, gamma x, y prime x, y delta t plus terms of order delta t square. Of course, you can have, um, so, so this is very specific. This is what allows you to derive the master equation. So um, it's not a question that you keep delta t very so small that uh, you, for, you, you uh, neglect these terms. So if, if you, this, this jumps must be of order delta t square, which means that they, they you can have uh, motion like that, but uh, this motion uh, must be of delta t square. I mean, the probability to jump from here to here, that is. My question was basically in a physical situation, when do you have an example where we have this condition which holds? Because it seems like very restrictive if it's not an approximation of just how the system behaves at very small delta t. Uh, no, it's not so restricted. Bipartite systems are. Uh, Usually, they, these are uh, chemical reactions mediated by some chemostat, and uh, yeah. Well, I must admit that most of the applications are models that people has cooked. That I mean, they are inspired in some uh, biological motor and so on, uh, but um, they are models. So, um, so we end up when we took a model to have this condition. Yeah. Yeah, you are right that in the end it's an approximation because uh, uh, this can come, for instance, this type of models can also come if this is a protein and this is a, this is a conformation of a, this is position and this is a internal states. Usually this comes from a landscape of free energy where you have uh, like the egg box, you have different uh, minima. And then uh, you, have, you have minima with barriers in between. And usually this path is much easier than the diagonal path. But uh, in this case, it's what you said, it's a, it's a kind of approximation. Uh, you, say, you say we can go, for example, switch only the position or we switch the conformation. Yeah, the yeah, time. yeah. Yeah, if the system comes from some, of course, yeah, the system always comes from either a classical system which is continuous and then you discretize something like the native states, I mean the, the equilibrium states of proteins, or if it is a quantum system, you can have, this has been applied, for instance, in the paper by Massimiliano and Jordan, it's applied to quantum dots, and then essentially there, uh, yeah, you neglect the simultaneous jumps of, of, in principle, you should, mathematically, the condition is that one. So you need that, uh, that this is zero when both change. So the condition is that the simultaneous change should be delta t square. But of course, uh, this is a kind of, um, at the end, yeah, uh, well, you have here a Markovian approximation. So to get the master equation, you have a lot of approximations as well. So maybe you are right that in these approximations, sometimes you can neglect the, the simultaneous. OK, so the nice thing of a, a, a bipartite system is that if a system is bipartite, uh, then the, the total information the mutual information uh, can be written as the sum of x plus y. And uh, this uh, 
can be written. Um, remember that um, mm. uh, remember that um, I dot is the derivative with respect to time of the mutual information. Remember, the mutual information is, uh, you can always uh, uh, remember the mutual information as, as the kullback leibler divergence between the joint and the, and the, uh, and the factorize. So if you uh, uh, compute this, um, this is mm, uh, you make the derivative of this times this and, and this, the derivative of this. This is always, uh, because of normalization, the only remaining term is this one. And using um, and then we can use the master equation the master equation on the typical one with all these things. Uh, to express this as uh, x i prime x y and the log of p of the joint okay this is something that we have done uh, no remember that uh, you make, we have done this for the shadow entropy, but it is the same for the mutual information. If you make the derivative of this, you, you get this term, p dot times this, and then p times the derivative of this. The derivative of this, you put this in, well, this is just the shannon entropy, and you remember the derivative of the log gives you a, a 1 over p, which cancels with this, p dot, which is 0 because of the normalization, and the same with these ones. So... Um, you, you have only to make the derivative here. The derivative affects everything, of course, but uh, all these terms uh, are zero. The derivative with respect to time of this is zero. And now you apply this, and here you have the, how the, uh, the mutual information evolves. Okay? And this in the steady state is zero. But now we have these jumps, and the idea, this is the, the original idea by, uh, well, by all these people that I mentioned, the idea is that we can split these into two terms, one with the currents affecting with, the, with these currents, the vertical currents, and one with this, uh, uh, the, the horizontal currents. So in this, in Well, I'm doing it in general, then I, I'm doing it for uh, time-dependent probabilities, but at the end of the day, I will uh, uh, apply this only to the, um, to, uh, the steady state. So I split these sums over uh, just changes in, in Y and changes in Z. So... Uh, 1x, x, y, x prime. So here, remember, I have jumps that keep y constant and go from x prime to x. Uh, 
and I have now this thing. And the same. So here, uh, let's say I'm pretty. I, I'm in fact, well, yeah, it's, uh, I have the sum on x, y, and now I only change uh, y, so I keep constant x, and I jump from y prime to y. And this is the information flow due to the jumps in y. And this is the information flow due to jumps in x. And the nice thing is that now, in the steady state, this can be 0, but the flow can be different from 0. This is the idea, that in the steady state, the, the whole, the, this can be constant, the whole thing, the whole mutual information is constant, but this can be different from zero and this can be different from zero. Okay. So in the steady state, I is zero. And then this is minus the information flow due to this is uh, this is minus this, but this can be different from zero, and actually it's, it's different from zero in, in most cases. Uh, today I will not have time to do an example, but this is in most cases. So then I will have one information flow positive, one information flow negative, and now uh, look at. Um, the interpretation of this, the interpretation of this is the following. This information flow, I think we discussed this yesterday as well, but it is good to repeat it. This information flows uh, is the change in the mutual information due to the evolution of x, keeping y constant, and due to the evolution of y, keeping x constant. So what happens if, for instance, y, x is positive? Suppose that y x is positive. What means that y x is positive? This means that x, if if I consider the evolution of x keeping y constant, the mutual information grows. So x is, is measuring y. So this means that x is the demon. This means also, uh, so uh, this means that x is measuring y. And actually, in this case, uh, y dot is negative. Let's put it like that. So uh, this is this is the say, this is because of this in the steady state. This if this is positive, this is negative. What means that this is negative? That y in its evolution, x keeping constant, y is decreasing the the mutual information so it's exploit i mean it's it's like a feedback in the feedback remember in the feedback the demon doesn't change its state but modifies uh, the cylinder engine and so on to decrease and exploit the 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 correlations so this means that uh, y is uh, y is the working substance
And this is the way we, uh, uh, we can um, uh, apply the, the, inform the ideas of uh, thermodynamics of information to these systems. This is nice, but you can say, <laughs> but is this useful? <laughs> OK, it is useful to say, ah, actually, the demo is very nice, but uh, uh, we would like something more useful, which is the second law. And the, the nice thing is that if you remember the second law, This second law was uh, useless because everything was zero in the steady state. Everything was zero. Now we can make a second law for each of these guys. We can make, we can prove local second laws. One can, we can prove a second law for uh, for um, mm, for uh, x. So we can split every everything. We we have a split this into a sum of uh, the jumps. This is how the mutual information changes. We have split it into the change due to x and the change due to y. We can split this also on uh, an environment of x. And an, an environment of Y. I will do this tomorrow. And we can, uh, well, this is just as, as uh, and these are already, this is due to jumps on X because it's the entropy, the shallow entropy of the marginal, and this is the shallow entropy of the marginal. So we can prove two second laws, one due to jumps on X, which is this one. And the other is this one. This is general, and in a steady state, in the steady state, of course, this is zero, this is zero. So in the steady state, we will have that. Uh, uh, minus i dot x. Tomorrow I will prove this. Eh? Is a uh, s x environment, and because in the steady state this is minus this, I have. And this is new. This is not just a, a, a fancy interpretation of the machine as, a, as a information machine and so on. This is a, these are two conditions. If you sum both, you get, of course, the sum of this. Sorry, this is x. The sum of the sum of this plus this is cancels with this, and you get that the environment, the entropy in the environment, uh, you get the second law. So you recover the second law. But you have two more uh, constraints to your system. And this is because the system is bipartite. And this, is, this tells you, this is interesting, because this is telling you, for instance, suppose that x is the demon. We have said that x is the demon if, uh, uh, the, if this guy is positive. If this is positive, then this must be positive. Uh, no, because this is a minus, so this must be positive. So this means that the demon is, is, is increasing the entropy of its environment. So it's essentially uh, dissipating heat or things like that. And, um, and, and, and it's increasing this entropy to measure. But now look at this guy. Now this is positive, so this can be negative. So why the working substance can decrease the entropy of its environment? And this is essentially a machine. A machine is something that it is increasing the entropy of something. For instance, in the ATP, ADP machines in, 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 in biology, uh, uh, you increase the entropy of the chemostat of the ATP, ADP reservoir. 
but you, for instance, but you move against the force or something like that, so you are taking energy, uh, for instance, for, uh, heat from, from another reservoir. So you are increasing the entropy in one reservoir and you are decreasing the entropy in another reservoir. Yeah? Until? They don't have the same environment until we start using it. Because we are OK. Uh, this is, uh, I, I wanted to, to establish the laws. Uh, maybe I have time to prove it, because they are not so difficult. So uh, let, me, um, let me prove it. So um, the idea is to get, let me uh, get, I will prove the first one. The second one is, is, is essentially the same thing. So I can, um, I will use this, okay, let me use this, but here, well, I will make the proof and you will see, because in the proof you, you see the, the, the definition, the specific definition of the environment. So, um, um, uh, to uh, finish this, uh, let me consider, uh, if I split this uh, log into the sum, let me do it with this term. So I have this term here. Uh, and this is a log of P of the joint minus log of P X minus log of PY uh, and now this this sum runs over I prime so I can get this log outside so uh, let me now consider only this term so this term is J X Y prime plus Y log of P And this is a sum over y prime, and it's also a sum over x and y. So I can get this out and rearrange the sums in such a way that this is pxt, and this is the sum over i and y and y prime of j y prime y. And this is zero, okay? This is zero because the, the, the current is anti-symmetric with respect to y and, and y prime. And then I'm counting all the possible um, uh, jumps, okay? <coughs> so this is zero. Or if you like, you are computing, you have to look at this, a current times a function is how this function changes. So you are trying, you are uh, computing how the log of px changes using jumps that only change in y. So it's zero, essentially uh, only in this term, in this, in this sums, only those terms in, that have y will change. And here, only y is constant. So the terms that only contain y are, doesn't change. So in these two equations, in this equation, I can neglect this, one, this py. And in this equation, I can neglect this px. So the, the information flow. It's just this sum. And now in the steady state, this will be a steady state. I can do like that. So this is the information flow of X. 
What is the environment? Well, tomorrow, tomorrow we will, we will, uh, we will prove this. Actually, we will prove this. So, so let me keep that this is not a steady state. So we will prove it for the, for the general case. What is the environment? So you can imagine what is the environment. The, the so when the environment enters into the mathematics of the master equation, it enters when you compute the energy change or, or when, you, when you impose the detail balance condition. So what you have, remember this, that we always have, that you can have uh, uh, this EJ, EY, and then you have gamma I to J. Here you can have a, diff you can have a temperature for the transition because we have seen in this example that each transition can be, in principle, mediated by a different thermal bath. Then you have this term, and then we have the uh, free energy change in the environment. So essentially, this, when you take KT log of this, you, get, you have the change of entropy in the environment. Now you have changes in y and changes in x. So the, the temperature, the heat, because this is the heat, uh, not the heat, the energy dissipated to the bath, and the free energy change in the bath, you will have some changes in the y transitions, in the vertical transitions, and some changes in the x transition. Each environment is responsible for these transitions. So the environment of Y is responsible for the vertical transitions, and the environment of X is responsible of the X transitions. So these are different thermal baths in the air. You can have different thermal baths, different reser particle reservoirs, and so on and so on. But does everything still work if we have just one common environment? Um, Uh, to prove the, the second law, you only need to classify, let's say, yeah, they can have a common thermal bath, for instance, or a common, even a particle, res particle reservoir. Yeah, they can have a common part. So this, this is a way, what I'm going to do at the end is, is, for instance, what is the environment change in X? So this is going to be, uh, this is what we, we are going to do tomorrow. This is going to do, uh, we, we keep system Y constant, we change from X to X prime, and, um, and this transition has some uh, uh, change in the environment, which is a K log of gamma Y. X, X prime, divided by gamma Y, X prime X. So you keep, you, 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 this, this Y is X, X, Y, and this J is X, Y. So you consider transitions where only X changes. And this term, which was in the master equation, uh, the term of the entropy, uh, the change of entropy in the bath, this term uh, gives you the change of entropy in the environment. And the same for for y, no? For y would be uh, k so it's true, it doesn't, it, the, the bath can be the only th important thing is that you identify as as environment X, the environment that it is inducing the horizontal changes. And the environment of Y is the environment that it is responsible of the vertical changes. But they can be the same. For instance, in the paper by Massimiliano and Jordan, you have, a, you have two quantum dots. 
uh, which are coupled by some uh, capacitance. And, uh, and as far as I remember, they are connected to the same. They are, uh, you, you know, a quantum dot is something that if you connect to, to, to a battery or to something uh, uh, in a circuit, it can be occupied or empty and so on. So they, they connect this to a battery. The battery is essentially two Fermi gases with different chemical potentials, mu L and mu R. And, and they connect the two. So the reservoirs are these ones. But when an electron jumps, this is x and this is y. When an electron jumps from the, from the electrode to this quantum dot, this is the y environment. And when you have this jump, this is the x environment. So it's not, it's not important the, that the environments are physically separated. The only important thing is that the, how the environments, or how the, the single environment, affects the transitions in X and in, and, and in Y. So, uh, yeah, that's a good point. But, uh, and, uh, and tomorrow we will make this derivation. This derivation is very, is very, is, is essentially the same derivation that we have done yesterday with the master equation and the second law, but using jumps on X or jumps on Y, horizontal jumps and vertical jumps. And then I will uh, apply this to an example, and then uh, we will finish with some. Uh, notes about the uh, lesson 9 and lesson 10, which will be just uh, some transparencies, okay?